53rd Annual Commissioner for Westside Leadership Academy. I would like to welcome our distinguished guests, Senator Eddie Melton, State Representative Dr. Vernon Smith, 
Mayor Jerome Prince. Welcome to our advisory board, district administrators, faculty, and staff. The most important welcome is to you, your parents, guardians, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles, brothers, brothers sisters, sisters that have that supported, supported the class, class of 2021. 2021. Thank, Thank you, you for entrusting your, your scholars with us during your time, time here. To the class of 2021, we are here to recognize you. As you look back on this school year, 20, 30, 40 years from now, you will share the stories of your, of your senior, senior year being one that consists of Google Classroom, classroom webcams, web and, and finding find a quiet it. place at home to do your work. You may even share that you went from English class to math class by moving from one couch to the next. However, when you tell your story, story years, years from now, now remember, remember to share, to share how resilient you were this time. time. Remember, Remember to share how you did not allow a global, global pandemic, pandemic to stop, to stop you from reaching this, this point or walking walk across, across the stage. stage. Each of you are proof that when hard work meets resilience, great things happen. On behalf of the entire administration team, we are extremely proud of each and every one of you. To parents, thank you for all that you do and sharing your students with us. We are happy to be a small piece of their future success. Again, to everyone here, I welcome you and congratulations to the class of 2021. Together that will last us a lifetime. 
Our freshman and sophomore years were pretty normal. We came into our freshman and sophomore years like most freshmen and sophomores do. That's when you start to really get to learn the in and outs of the school. You make some stupid mistakes. For example, I remember one time in my Spanish class, I tried to write down the answer to a test <laughs> on the desk. <laughs> Ms. Vasquez, as you can see, she won't let me live it down to this day. She caught me so fast, it was crazy. But you do a lot of stupid stuff like that your freshman and sophomore years. It's a learning experience. It's just how it is. But, you know, those things are normal. Our junior years when things began to get really different. For me, I had enrolled in dual enrollment classes at IUN. So now I have high school and college classes to worry about. That alone isn't so daunting. But now I have to actually study for tests and make sure I was doing all my work in a timely fashion or I'd be cramming all day on a Sunday to get it done. That was a lesson I didn't really pick up on though until I had to write a 15 page APA paper for my psychology class that I didn't start on about until about two days before it had actually been due. I somehow got late. Not to mention, at the time, my grandma was in the hospital fighting cancer. I really wasn't thinking about going out then. I wanted to be with her every second that I could, and I did. I don't regret that time and I never will. When she passed, I was really pushing and trying to stay on top of everything, but luckily, I had a lot of people in my corner, thanks to a lot of my classmates, and especially my teammates. They helped keep me pushing, even if I never told them that. Despite all that, I was still excited to get into what I assume would be the more joyous years in my school you know, in my school life. And for a while, we did. We had our homecoming games, our homecoming dance, and other events that I had gone to in previous years. So I was glad then. Little did any of us know we wouldn't have those same opportunities the next year. As you all know, COVID hit us hard in the spring of, year, of the last year, shutting down in-school learning. A lot of people thought it was going to be great to be out of school for a few weeks. But then as time went on, more things began to shut down. And soon enough, we were locked down in the quarantine. We had to do schoolwork on the computer. And because it was so short notice, many students didn't have a reliable means of doing cell work or attending online classes. And a lot of people struggled to adjust to this new way of learning. I know I did. Waking up and not having to move from my bed while in class, that just made me unmotivated to even care. Luckily, we live in a time where technology is extremely useful. So we managed to make it through our junior year by communicating with each other over text and Facebook, Facebook groups. It was tough. However, we still didn't think too much of it. After all, we were still under the impression that we would have our senior year. But it also persisted well into the summer and made getting together with our friends impossible. All kinds of activities all over the globe were being shut down. So that meant for some people, we couldn't play summer sports like AAU until almost the entire break was over, which was a blessing in and of itself. We couldn't go out because everyone was closed down and it was pretty uneventful. Though we did manage to have a few different events put together by some of our very own, like the Black Oaks Open Run. Things like that might seem small, but it was good for us to come together and do things like that. We are still kids after all, it's almost like torture to be stuck in the house all day, every day. Still, we thought it couldn't last much longer, and many of us maintained excitement for our senior year. Well, entering our senior year, the school was much more organized in terms of how the schooling was set up, but we were still dealing with the pandemic. Some people had family members die from the virus, some people actually got sick with the virus, and others just wanted this to end already. But we can't just wish away something like a pandemic, so we did the only thing we could do for a while, which was deal with it. Senior year was much harder than I had expected it to be. Scholarships had, and still do have, to be filled out. The SAT and ACT had to be taken. Classes had to be had. Senior dues had to be paid. And because mandate, and because quarantine mandates were still in place at the time, many of us didn't have anywhere to go to relieve that stress. Lucky for some of us, sports were finally full back in, in full, full force. So we were able to have that much. And I'm thankful we got that. We were able to travel out to different tournaments and compete, and each of us got to play the games we loved. With some differences to accommodate for the virus, of course. The whole school year has been all of us coming together to make sure we all pass, helping each other instead of leaving each other to fan for ourselves. I know some of us aren't here for this ceremony, but I know that even they are gonna graduate during the summer. I know this because all of us are resilient. We don't cave when things don't go our way. Instead, we just do what we've gotta do for ourselves. What we've done isn't anything any senior class before us can say they've done. We're special in ways that nobody else may understand. When I think about this past year, one word comes to mind, different. A lot of people like to use the phrase, oh, I'm just built different. But then I think about our class, and I don't think that phrase applies to anyone more than us. Many of us are going on to pursue the next step in our lives, and I couldn't be prouder. 
We have so much talent here, more than what the media has put out about us. Just from my own classmates, I learned what it means to really overcome and how important it is to make stuff happen instead of waiting on them to magically happen for you. Talking about how this is just the beginning or the end will be lame and overall kind of pointless. Everyone here has already heard that or already knows this. So instead, let's just all enjoy today. Let's enjoy the present for what it is so we can't have regrets and can give it our all for the future. I love all of y'all and I wish you well in your future endeavors. Intelligence. This is what we bleed. 
We all know the expression, Philly Blue. Now, I claim to be an honest person, so I can candidly say that this year, all of us were Philly Blue. This year has taken us, has taken us through the ride of a lifetime. Not a ride with smooth, fresh pavement, no. This, this ride had potholes and dips, you know. But as we know, nothing in life comes easy. There's this saying that I read so many times, what comes easy won't last, what lasts won't come easy. You can't, you can't have, have diamonds, diamonds without, without pressure. pressure. It takes, it takes billions, billions of years for the carbon, carbon atoms, atoms to endure the heat, heat and pressure that allows them to crystallize. Have you ever seen glass objects in creation? They have to endure excruciating heat. Sometimes it's transferred to a mold where the glass takes form of the mold's interior, and other times now because the glass is malleable, they take a mallet and they pound it. We are the glass, and life is the mallet. After we've overcome the pressure and the fire of life, it will continue to hit us as hard as it can. But our struggles and tribulations are hard, albeit necessary, portions of life. They strengthen us. They mold us. We've all discussed spray tags pyramid in every English class we've taken. What's the story without the rising action and the climax? There isn't one. To accomplish great things, you must not only act, but also dream. Not only plan, but also believe. Anatoly France. Class of 2021, made of dreamers and believers, made of action takers and plan makers. This day has been in the making for four years. This, this day has been in the making for four years. years. We, we have dreamt, dreamt about, about this day. day. We have made plans and taken actions and taken actions for this day to happen. In spite of everything, we still believe that this day would occur. We have made it through a portion of our junior year and our complete senior year of online learning. We've had, we have endured the last 14 months without motivation, being stressed, and simply feeling blue. Yet here we are. We have done it and we are still doing it. We are living through two pandemics, viral and racial, being fearful of the flu on steroids and being fearful of our lives because of things we cannot control. During, During the summer of 2020, we have witnessed riots, protests, marches, and other similar actions. We see how the oppressors react, even when we remain peaceful, unarmed, and black. Yes, when we remain black, because we cannot change who we are. Even if we were given the opportunity to change, I believe that we would not. Because if we are nothing else, we are resilient. We are strong, self-sufficient, reliable, inspiring. We are fighters. We are cougars. We are the graduating class of 2021. my classmates, my peers, the graduating scholars, thank you for taking this ride. This ride where we encouraged each other, entertained each other, helped each other, and supported each other. I am, I am so proud to have classmates with such might tenacity and persistence is all of you. If we can make it through this ride, we will make it through the next bus of bones. Do you all remember that skeleton in Mr. Crawford's classroom? <laughs> it, it wasn't fully skeletal. It was divided into two. The fleshly exterior and the skeletal interior with the internal organ. Excuse my language, but whenever I would look at it, it would, it would creep me out. I mean, I'm literally staring at 
our support structure and what it's supporting. Of course, I've seen skeletons before. They're photographed, digitized, and beautified, but it was something about that structure. It was so raw, so real, and it's just staring right back at you. Yet again, that's how life is. We have to face the rawness and reality of it, such as death, sickness, and existing. Yes, existing, because more often than not, we find ourselves existing rather than living. Well, it's time to start living. Living, it can consist of many actions. Finding love, embracing emotions, leaving your home, eliminating negativity, and taking trips. Well, the only way we travel is by the plane of potential. There are various parts of a plane, the fuselage, cockpit, the wings, the tail or empennage, the engine, propeller, the landing gear. We can look at these constituents as our careers. Whether we decide on trades or profession, neither holds more significance than the other. The constituents of this plane of potential are engineers, teachers, contractors, plumbers, mechanics, doctors, technicians, lawyers, architects, realtors, accountants, entrepreneurs. Some of us may not even choose to be traditional workers. We may choose to be artists, dancers, singers, actors, actresses, producers. No matter what we are, our greatness will take us further than we've expected. Let's look at it as a rocket of reality. Rockets, they launch satellites and space shuttles into space. They are the propellers to great discoveries. We are responsible for our own rockets. It is up to ourselves to take what we are instilled with and send it out into the world to make it greater than before. Maybe our forms of space shuttles and satellites will make world-changing discoveries. Maybe our satellites and space shuttles won't make it past the stratosphere. Regardless of the conditions of our rockets, we will always have to propel what we have in life. I tell you that life will continue to try to beat us down but after so many hits, we will fight back. We will take that mallet from the grasp of life, and we will then pound life into, we, into what we want it to be. Life has only begun, so it's still malleable. When life finally shapes into what you want it, into what you make it, there are some things to keep in mind. Remember that we have to stay humble. Have integrity, show compassion, be grateful and honor God. Remember that the best support to have is the support from yourself. And to paraphrase our very own Mr. Reed, sometimes you will be berated and castigated, but you have to remember that you are always adulated and venerated. Life will not always work out how we plan. There are so very little in our control. It will not be genuine, warm, and inviting. This world is cold, harsh, and scary. It is up to us to adjust and flow efficiently in these uncharted waters. We have to learn how to ride the wave. How so can they? Well, an intelligent peer of ours, Damari, <laughs> he once stated that, that hard work is the nature of exceeding limits defined by those who don't deviate from past mediocrity. We know how to work with what we have. We have gained wisdom from what we have seen and witnessed. We have learned to adjust to circumstances that are abnormal, and we have exceeded the limitations of the mediocrity that we were acclimated to. We have the tools to build a life from what we have and to create more from our and to create more materials from our existing ones, which we can continue to add on. With those skills equipped in us, we are unstoppable. Hey world, watch out! This is a different breed of cougars on the rise, and we are dominating this new path. We are a force to be reckoned with. Congratulations, size of 2021. I am so proud of you.
speeches that will resonate with us in the years to come. come. At this, this time, time, I will bring forth the student who will introduce our speakers for the day, Damari Rosie. Yeah, Damari! Seems like it was not that long ago, but as I sit and listen to you all, y'all 
<laughs> but it's okay because I'm proud to be a Cooper. I'm proud to see all this orange and blue, and I'm proud of each and every one of you working towards your achievements and your goals. You have endured so much this past school year and, and the last 18 months, actually. So be proud of yourselves because it takes a lot to get through what you have done. You are unique in the sense that no one else in this school's history has done what you've done leading up to this graduation day. This year has been unpredictable, but you made it to the finish line. You've definitely worked hard to get to this point with the support and love of your family members and many people on your team cheering you on. You are all shining examples of resilience during a time when others may have given up. When I was uh, sitting in the auditorium on June 7th of 1993, I was excited, I was nervous, I didn't know what to expect, and um, pretty much I think I was nervous first of all because I was sitting on the front row and I was reminded to continue to cross my legs at the ankles so nobody could see up my dress and I got that reminder again today as I'm sitting up front. And it was just like, man, all these people are looking at us and they're here to celebrate with us because they have played a part in the journey that we were on. And just like that day for me, all these people are here to celebrate you. They played some role in the journey that you are continuing to travel because this isn't the end. This is the very beginning. My principal was Dr. Donald Love. And Dr. Love recently passed away, and some of my classmates and I were kind of reminiscing about when he was our principal, and he stayed on us, you know. Nobody ever thinks their principal is the best all the time. But Dr. Love turned out to be a really good guy. We didn't think so at the time, but once he told us, you know, hey, this is a honeymoon, wait till you get out into the real world, we used to be like, what are you talking about, Dr. Love? What does that mean? And as I think about it now, um, I think he was trying to get a message to us that every decision that we made from that day forward was going to affect the rest of our lives. And whether it was positive or ne negative, we had to take the time to think about it. We were ultimately responsible for the rest of the decisions that were going to be made in our lives. From the time we were in kindergarten through graduation day, there was always somebody there making those decisions with us. But, but after, after that, that point, point, it was going to be mainly us. And those are the things that started getting me nervous and excited about moving forward beyond this day. And those are the things that should get you excited about achieving your goals. Graduation is the milestone that made me realize I had to believe in myself. Not just everybody else believing in me. Because up until this point, I was doing things to make sure I didn't disappoint anybody. I was doing things to make sure that all the people believed in me were proud of what I was exemplifying in every aspect of my edu education. But after graduation, then I was like, man, I gotta believe in me because if I don't believe in me, how can I have a support system continue to go forward with me in life? So remember, always believing in yourself, it allows you to achieve anything you set your mind to. It also allows you to ignore the negativity around you. You can focus on what you want the end result to be and allow God and your faith to guide you in achieving any goals that you want to set. And, and it's also important to um, set goals because when you set goals, you know that you're working towards something. You become motivated. You create a roadmap of what you want to achieve and accomplish. Write those goals down, whether it's in your phone, it's in the tablet, on the computer, or if you have an actual journal that you write in. That way, you'll be able to come back and reflect on those things and see and appreciate all the hard work and effort that it took to reach those goals despite any challenges that may arise, such as, I don't know, like a global pandemic. I mean, you all, again, are so unique that no one will be able to tell this story of such a culmination and a celebration of what you have achieved.
seek, seek out, out mentors, mentors or, or someone, someone who's just a little bit older than you that has gone through some things that you've gone through that you can talk to, that you feel comfortable talking to. Doesn't always have to be a family member, but someone that you trust to discuss your goals, any challenges, or the good things that happen in your life. Don't always think that people don't want to help you out. Just because adults are move, moving around and busy and living their lives doesn't mean they won't stop to give you time to guide you because we want you to succeed. This community cares about each and every one of you. We all want you to be the best version of yourself possible. And as a community, we will do whatever we can to help you, to help you continue to be the best version of you. When, when faced, faced with difficult decisions, decisions don't, don't be afraid, afraid of making a mistake. Don't, don't be, be afraid, afraid of feeling rejected. Don't, don't be afraid, afraid of looking, looking foolish. foolish. Yeah, those are not really positive feelings, but once you get past those things, if you realize that you're trying and you're working towards a goal, once you achieve that goal, that'll be the best reward ever. You will be able to say, look, I triumphed over all those things that were trying to keep me back. I was able to get past the enemy that was trying to keep me from victory and achieving the things that I wanted to achieve to have the best life that God has to offer me. And when it gets difficult, continue to stand. Continue to believe in yourself. Believe in what God created you to be, and that is greatness. You are all special. You are all great in your own way. So, so don't, don't ever, ever doubt, doubt that. You weren't brought, brought this, this far, far to fail. fail. So, so don't, don't give up. up. Don't, don't let any obstacles stand in your way. And, and don't, don't let, let anyone tell, tell you that, that you can't do anything you set your mind to. Oprah Winfrey said that the true measure of courage is not whether you reach your goal, it's whether you decide to get back on your feet no matter how many times you may fail. You have to keep trying, which requires courage and believing in yourself. Having the courage to stand up and pursue your dreams will give you the best rewards in life. My husband and I stepped out on faith when we opened up our law firm in Gary, Indiana. And this is the community that we grew up in. This is the community that raised us, that instilled values in us, and uh, pride in us, and we're proud of this city. It's the city where our parents live. It's the city where our families live. And this was a dream of ours to give back to the place that made us who we are. You all, graduating from Westside Leadership Academy, are being molded into great people. This is the community that is making you who you are. We want you to realize that no matter what anybody says about this community, this community is great because you are a part of it. Because you are a product of Gary, Indiana. Gary produces talent. And when I say talented people, I'm not talking about just the famous entertainers and and athletes. I'm talking about business owners. I'm talking about entrepreneurs. I'm talking about doctors, lawyers, public relations and marketing specialists, fashion, fashion designers, award-winning hair stylists and makeup, and makeup artists. This, this city, city produces engineers, electricians, accountants, architects, contractors. This city produces great people. And you are a product of this city and you will continue to be great as you continue to move forward in the path that it was um, something that I don't, I don't have in my notes, but I feel like I should tell this story. Um, I always talk about what influenced me to be a lawyer, and it was seeing someone that looked just like me. I, up until the eighth grade, I never saw a black woman that was a lawyer. I never knew any other thing than old white men being lawyers, and I'm just being candid, and it was on TV. Or if I saw them, you know, if I knew that people were lawyers, or men were lawyers, you know, it was just out in the street. But there was a career day fair that I had in the eighth grade where I met somebody that looked like me, a black woman that was a lawyer. And she made such an impression on me that I always feel the need to make sure to tell that story because somebody else might be influenced by what I say. And I don't say it to be an influence, I say it to encourage you. One of, One the, of things the things that, that we have in our firm, we've got billboards. I did not want to put those billboards up. I was just like, oh my goodness, our faces are going to be plastered everywhere. We're going to look like these other attorneys around, just like ambulance chasers. 
But my <laughs> husband convinced me that it was more than that. It was about being positive images. It was about people being able to see someone that looked like them from the place that they were from. And so our billboards are only in the city of Gary for you all to see so that you know that this place is a place that I can come back to and be something great. And so with that, we continue to put on good. We continue to exude positive images and I continue to come back and talk. And one of the main reasons why I was like, yes, we will accept this invitation because I want you all to understand this is your time, this is your city, and this is your place. You come back and you make it great. You be proud from, uh, for being from Gary. You be proud of this education. You be proud of everything that you've done to get to this point. Because if you're not proud of where you're from, how do you expect other people to re uh, respect you? You respect where you're from. Hold your head high. Because you, Westside Leadership Academy Class of 2021, are greatness. So as you continue to celebrate everything that you've accomplished over these last four years while you've been here, know that we as a community are proud of you. Know that we continue to believe in you and know that God created you for greatness. So continue to believe in yourself. God bless you and congratulations class of 2021. <laughs> said years ago and I remember what you felt like when you were, when, when, when you were sitting there you probably are thinking man I got a party to get to I got food waiting on me and I hope this dude does not take too long so I promise I'm not gonna take too long especially uh, with all the, the things that my beautiful wife has said there's no sense of reiterating those things but there are a couple of points that I want to make first of all I want to thank Dr. McNulty for this uh, gracious invitation to address you. I want to thank the advisory board and most importantly I want to thank you class of 2021 and the teachers that have dedicated all of the hard work to make this very day possible. And I really want to thank God for this opportunity to really have a chance to share with you some of my thoughts and hopefully give you some ideas as you move forward into the world. One of the things that really inspired me over this past year, especially during the pandemic, was the Westside Cougar basketball team. Yes, sir. Yeah. They almost won state, and the basketball team was phenomenal. And one of the things that made that so great is that it just, it just re-energized the city, and it was creating positive imagery in the city, and a city that needs it very much. And one of the things that I remember that, the, that a lot of basketball players, particularly the West Side Cougars would do is when they would do something well, they would give each other high fives, and they would point to their jerseys, they would put their jerseys up, and they would put their West Side Cougar jerseys up, and I thought that was just awesome. And one of the things that made me think is jerseys, are very important to life, not just on the basketball court or on the field. We all have jerseys that we wear in life. Not just in sports, but in life. So one of the jerseys that you will have to wear when you go out into the real world is the jer jersey of God. When you go out into the real world, make sure that you put God first in each and everything that you do because you are representing him when you are out there. Ephesians 2 and 10 says that we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared us in advance to do. All of you, each and every one of you that are sitting in these seats today are made and created in God's image. And what that means is that no matter what anybody says, 
No matter what anybody does, you are unstoppable. You can't be stopped because you are created in his image. And one of the things that I think about when I think about this concept of being created in God's image and wearing God's jersey is most of you are probably familiar with Superman. Superman is not Superman when he's just Clark Kent and he has on those glasses. He's only Superman when he goes into the booth and he has that S on his chest, that jersey. Then he's superhuman. That's what happens to you each and every time you put God first in each and every step in your life. The next jersey of life that you should wear proudly is your family jersey. You have a lot of family members, mothers, fathers, aunts, cousins that all made this day possible for you. And when you step out in the real world, you're wearing their jersey, you're representing them. And one of the things that my father told me before I went to college, he told me, don't make a fool out of yourself. <laughs> You're representing the Talbert name, and I always remember that. So all of you have a distinct and collective name that you represent when you go off to school and off to college. Some of you might not go to college, and that's fine, but you still have a jersey and a family name that you represent, and you should represent it to the fullest. That means that being the best that you can be at any endeavor that you embark upon, you should do it with, to the best of your ability. The last and final jersey that you will wear is the proud jersey of Gary, Indiana. You are from this community. And when you leave this graduation, and when you go out into the real world, there are gonna be people that tell you not to come back. There are gonna be people that tell you that you should move as far away from this place as you can. And when I say to those people, I say, look at my jersey. And that's what you should tell them, is to look at your jersey. And the Gary, Indiana jersey means that you're resilient, that you persevere, that you have swagger. The kids still use swagger? No. They don't use swagger? No. OK. All right. All right. <laughs> lit? 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 All right. That you're lit? Lit? <laughs> OK. OK. That you're cool, that you're... you can do everything because you come from a community that has invested in you and that has given you, as one of my favorite movies would say, a special set of skills. People from Gary are just different. They're just different. And I would say embrace that and come back and invest in this city. And one of the things that Shalise talked about was that is one of the very reasons that we came back because we wanted to make sure that we contributed to this city by coming back and investing in it. And I will ask that you do the same. Wear your Gary, Indiana jersey proudly, come back and invest in the city, and make Gary, Indiana the best place to live, work, and play. So I wanna say thank you very much, and God bless the class of 2021. for the words of encouragement to our students and to ourselves, recognizing that we wear a special jersey of multiple types. At this time, it is my pleasure to bring forth two outstanding gentlemen who represent the state of Indiana and our area and their special friends to us. And so the first individual that I will bring forth will be Indiana State Senator Eddie Milton. Give it on to God. I want to thank him for this day. I want to thank you all for being with us. I want to thank Dr. Notes. I want to thank the advisory board, all the dignitaries that's here with us. I want to thank the teachers. I want to thank the parents. But most of all, I want to thank class of 2021. Today I stand before you humble and honored. I'll be very quick and brief to get to my remarks. I know that my friend Michael Tover said you guys are ready to wrap it up. The class of 2021, let me start by saying that I'm proud of you. You overcame one of the most turbulent times in our nation's history during a pandemic. But even a global pandemic couldn't stop you from walking across the stage. But let this year remind you of one thing, and this is one thing my mother always tells me, 
We may not know what the future holds for us, but rest assured, we know who holds the future. God is always in control. So we thank God for creating a generation of leaders and overcomers. Class of 21, the world, this world, the city of Gary, it needs you now more than ever. The world needs your mind now more than ever to solve some of the most complex issues in our society, like poverty and hunger. The world needs your creativity now more than ever to help develop new and innovative technology and arts. And your, this world needs your advocacy to speak truth to power because we all have a moral obligation to seek justice to those that seek it. But just like you and your family have faith, faith to help you get here to this very day, don't allow that faith to fade once you walk across this stage. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 tells us, for we live by faith and not by sight. And lastly, James 1, 3-4, this is one of my favorites. It's the trying of our faith that works patience. But let patience have her perfect work. Now I'll say this. It's inevitable that we will encounter hardships. It's guaranteed that we will experience tests and trials in our life. But keep your faith. Remember these few things right here. Faith is obeying when we don't understand. Faith is giving when we don't have it. Faith is persisting when we don't feel like it. And faith is being thankful before we even receive it. I know the sun is shining. Faith is trusting when we don't get it. And faith is believing even before we receive it. So as I prepare to wrap up, and I know it's time to go, I'm going to say this. Don't chase. Don't chase power. Don't chase pain. Don't chase fame. But seek your purpose. Make that a priority. The Tovers talked about coming back and giving back to this community. Make Finding your purpose after today a priority. Make that your last homework assignment for this school year. I grew up in Gary just like many of you, so I know that you have a love and a passion for the city. So with that, I'll wrap up. I want to say congratulations to 2021, Westside Cougars. I want to say to Bob Hockey Mayne, thank you for your heartfelt words, giving your heart. To us all of us experience this day with you. Congratulations and much success. Now pray that God touches everyone that's here today. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Senator Young Milton. And then that's how we bring more of the Indian representative, Dr. Bernard Smith. Allow me to begin by giving reverence to God, who's the head of the city of my life, and honor to our honorable mayor and all the dignitaries that are part of this platform, and honor to you, the graduates. To the graduates of this class, I want to just thank you, you, you for not giving up on, on the Gary Community School Corporation for believing in our school corporation and it trusted us to provide you your pre-college and your pre-life experiences. And to the parents who supported the Gary Community School Corporation, allowing your offsprings to be here and to be educated by our system, I say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for believing in Gary, Indiana. And then to all of you and my father's children, I am humbled to be afforded this opportunity. I have served as a keynote speaker for almost all of the elementary schools in Gary, and I've even served as a high school graduation speaker for several of the charter schools. But this is the first time that I've been afforded to an opportunity to have an active role in the graduation ceremony for the Gary Community School Corporation. And so I thank Dr. McNulty and the leadership team for giving me this opportunity. 
I'm also honored because I'm a proud graduate of Fraser. Now you say, what does that have to do with Westside? Well, years ago, years ago, the Gary Community School Corporation chose to take all of the high school students from Tolleston, all the high school students from Frable, and merge them together to make the Westside High School. So as I look at you, you are offsprings of the greatest school that ever existed other than Westside, Frable School. And so I am honored to be here to speak. Well, I am not the keynote speaker, so I should speed this process up. Before I, I start to give me a chance. <laughs> See, you, you ought to know I have motor mouth. I got diarrhea tongue and dripping lip. You gotta give me some time. But before I take my seat, let me give you uh, a few nuggets. Nuggets that I think are coming from heaven. The first nugget, whatever society has made you think when it made you think that you're helpless, that you're powerless, don't believe it. The psalmist asked the question, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand, Thou hast put all things under his feet. As you go through life, when people try to make you feel like you are nothing, a nobody, remember you are somebody, but you're either in greater than that because you are God's creature. Remember that you are made just a little lower than the angels. You are somebody. And J.E.K. Agri, a West African minister, said it best when he says, My people of Africa, men have made you think that you're chickens, but he said, You are eagles, stretch forth your wings and fly. Remember that you're eagles. You may be cougars, but you're also eagles from Gary. The second nugget that I'd like to share with you life is full of stop signs. The stop signs were meant for traffic, not for people. And so you should remember that the battle is not over until you quit. Some years ago, the United States invaded Iraq. We tore down Hussein's statue, and we thought the war was over. But the war is still going on in Iraq. A war is not over until all of the parties quit. The battle is not over until you quit. Life may give up on you, your professors may give up on you, your employers may give up on you, your friends may give up on you, and even your parents may give up on you. But don't ever give up on yourself. The battle is not over until you quit. The race is not given to the script but to the battle is uh, uh, or nor to the battle to the strong. The race is given to he or she who endureth to the end. The battle is not over until you quit. And my final nugget, praise God. Some of you have a will choose to pursue collegiate studies. And some of you will choose to enter a career academy. Regardless, remember that you must stay focused. Universities, colleges, and life in general are filled with many distractions. Stay focused on your goal. Don't let the distractions capture your attention. When I went to Indiana University, Bloomington, and I went there for 15 years off and on, I seldom miss the dance. I want you to understand that this man who stand up here, who's older than black dirt, was here when Moses divided the water. Remember when they made the first apple pie, I love to shake my butt and I can dance. And so I spent my early days, I spent my early days dancing on campus, but I never lost my focus. I was a first generation student. I went down there to get a degree. 
And a lot of my friends didn't make it. I made it because I didn't forget that I went there to get a degree. Many of you know the story of the time Jesus sent his disciples to the other side. Later that evening, disciples saw Jesus coming across the water, walking on the water. They thought it was a spirit. But both audacious Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you. Jesus stretched out his hand to Peter. Peter stepped out of the boat and began to walk towards Jesus. Suddenly, he began to pay attention to the wind and the waves, and he began to sink. He hollered out to Jesus, asking him to save, save him. him. Peter, Peter was, was fine as long as he was looking at his goal to get to Jesus. He began to sink when he looked at the distractions, the wind and the waves. Stay focused on your goal. While I have other nuggets I can share with you, I have overslept my time. Let me close by congratulating you one more time and say may God bless you and thank you all for the time. We have now come to the time in our ceremony where we have the presentation of the class of Tanya Brewer. First, Miss Tanya Brewer, our sister and principal, followed by Vanessa Nick. Presenting this class by acknowledging the top ten. Kame Brown. Bobby Lamont Tenez Sanders Jr. Naomi Martin. Damari Rozier. Yeah. Amaya yeah. Sanders. Yeah. Frank Harden.
Jeremiah Blackman. <laughs> Alexis Latrice Benson. Natalia Barrett.
Natasha Clay.
Anthony Harris. Deja Harris. Devante Harris. Wane Holston. Talana Alexis Neal. Oh yeah, kill the kill. Devante Johnson. Samira Johnson. Damarion Newell. Tatiana Neal. Roynasia Pegwood. Billy Mowbray. Yeah. Richard Motika. Precious Moffitt. Carissa Minor. Yeah! Yeah, Carissa. Yeah, Marquel Miller. Yeah, Yeah, girl. Antoine Johnson. Yeah! Angela Johnson. Yeah! Levante Ligon. Jaquel Long. Taekwon Macon. Ashanti Christina McBride. Sincere McCarley. Antoinaya McDonald. 
Emmanuel Parham. Alana Parker. Stop playing with my son. We really out here. Stop playing with my son, man. Grant Patterson. <laughs> Niari Reynolds. <laughs> Kiara Ritz. Vernon <laughs> Reed. Devani Redmond. Jakaya Raptor. Deshaun Rankin. Amaria Price. Dorian Rabon. Zaria Norman. Oh yeah, big mate. Mason Nicholson. Azari Patton. <laughs> Carmen Payne. <laughs> Mario Perez. <laughs> Jamel Peters. Kimari Peterson. Shadell Payton. Christian Blair. Terrell Robertson. Corey Rogers Jr. Nivia Shelton. Quamel Travis. Diamond Tomlinson. Diane Thompson. Yeah. India Thomas. Yeah. Joshua Settles Stewart. Yeah. Madison Stewart. Paris Roberson. Yeah. Perion 
global thing. Shantaza Richardson. Tevante Taylor. Maya Wiley. Savion Haywood. Miguel Brown. Desmond Lancaster. Tommy Watts. Deshaun Warren. Andre Scott. Adama Walton. Talaya Wallen.
Christopher Williams. Kevin Williams. Kayla Willis. Anaya Wilson. Ariana Winfield. Devon Truitt. Jaheem Lewis. Destiny Quinn. Waylon Cheers. Yeah. Please remain seated until all of the graduates have left the stadium. Thank you. We have not got to that part, Mr. Player. Mr. Player. Put your robe back on, young man. We are the out of Christmas graduates, baby. We can go back to school on Monday. This time, I ask that uh, Dr. McNulty, oh, they're already with me, Dr. McNulty and Advisory Board President, Mr. Bugs, I present to you the class of 2021 for your acceptance. that the following students have met the requirements set forth by the Indiana Department of Education and Gary Community School Corporation. I recommend members of the class of 2021 as qualified candidates for the Westside Leadership Academy for School Diploma. Will the candidates of the graduation of this class please stand? What's up, Westside? Westside, Westside 21. I want to let you know that they found out something that they found out on the history of this earth. You graduated during the pandemic. You transitioned from a classroom to a virtual, and you did it. So from the uh, advisory board, I'm President Robert L. Bonds, Vice President Mr. Tillia. Mr. Norman Bailey, Vice Secretary and Mr. James C. Bailey. I hereby confer upon you, you the high school, school diplomas as dedicated with all the right privileges. There are two. two. At this point, you, you should, should move your castles from the right to the left side, to the left side. To the left side.
We again want to congratulate class of 2021. Westside Leadership Academy. I'm good. I'm still live and switching, so. You better be alive. Okay. It's alive. Oh, alive. Alive. Oh, it's alive. still alive. Love it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, congratulations to the graduates of Westside Leadership Academy. They are done.